to drag myself out and to say a few words because this hits so near and dear. Now, first of all, I want you to give yourself a round of applause for taking the time and the energy and the passion to come out and be here today. That's important. Now, when this bill came up in the legislature, I'm, again, I'm Tamara Grigsby. I'm, um, this is my fourth term in the State Assembly, and I represent the 18th Assembly District in Milwaukee. And I have never been so sick, literally and figuratively, um, as I've been this session by what I've seen Republicans do and the rights that have been taken away, the rights that have been trampled on, the disrespect to so many Wisconsin citizens is unbelievable. And this is just one more example of that. When the Castle Doctrine came up in the Assembly, I was vehemently opposed. Because I know a few things. I know that current law allows you to defend yourself when under the threat of bodily harm or death. So it's unnecessary. I know that a thing called racial profiling exists in this state in, 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 in great numbers. And now we have racial profiling with armed assistance. Now we have racial profiling with guns. Now we have armed racial profiling. That's dangerous. I knew that the Castle Doctrine, when it was AB 69 or SB 79, was unnecessary. And I knew that it was a part of a larger radical Republican agenda to, to make Wisconsin the okay corral, like so many other states. I knew these things, and I fought vehemently against it. Unfortunately, the numbers weren't on my side and weren't on the side of what is right and what is just, and we have the Castle Doctrine. And my biggest fears have come to fruition. We have a young man who lost his life who did not have to, who should not have. And the perpetrator is protected under law. We cannot have that. No. We cannot have that. So I did the best I could do in this building with this legislation. And unfortunately, the members were against me and I wasn't able to stop it. But now I call on to you. I need you to step in. I need you to bring somebody else with you next time. Bring two more people with you next time. Go to have more and more rallies. Because when your elected officials don't respond to your needs, it's your responsibility to get them out of this building. Right. It's your responsibility to get somebody else in there who will have your best interest in mind. And that's what we have to do. That's what we have to do. This is not the OK Corral. This is not a shoot first, ask later type of mentality state. And in the meantime, we are losing lives. And we will continue to lose lives. And they will be protected under what we call the Castle Doctrine. That is unacceptable. And I need you, just like you need me to fight on the inside, I need you to fight on the outside. Yeah. Yep. We can't lose one more black man to this. Right. 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 Enough is enough. Right. Yep. So that being said, I thank you for having me today. I thank you for the effort. You know, it's, it's really, it breaks my heart to go sometimes to prison tours and go places where I see young African-American men who have been disproportionately incarcerated because of laws that, that monopolize on disparity. And it makes me sad when I see so many black males who are unemployed, particularly in my district. But what I cannot tolerate is giving people a license to kill these same men. Right. And that's what this, this new legislation is.
And that's why you have to fight it. And I will be with you every step of the way. All right. And if nothing else, in the name of Bo, in the name of Trayvon, we have a responsibility to do what is right. So thank you for being here, and let's keep up the fight.